Welcome back to the fourth part in this series on Git and in this one we're going to talk about the branching mechanism that you should probably use when you're working with a Git project. Now there's generally speaking a good practice when it comes to this and it's called Git flow. What Git flow is, is it's just a methodology for you to be able to use when working either on your own or in a team to be able to use Git branches most effectively so that you can develop uh, multiple people on the same repository or just yourself uh, in a way that makes it more effective for you to be able to review your own code as well as other people's if you're working in a team with of course more than one person. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to set up uh, a, a very basic sort of git flow structure uh, to an existing repository. The first thing that we want to do if at the moment we just do git branch you can see we've only got one branch. Now this is okay if you say you're working on your own and you're you know, really aware of what's going on with the repository. Maybe it's something like uh, your dot files for example. If you only have uh, your personal configuration which happens to be on your GitHub page because you decide to publish it like a lot of people do. Uh, but it's, it's very uh, minimal in the sense that it doesn't have very many commits in that repository. Then it's okay probably just to go ahead and push, them up, push to the master branch. But generally speaking, especially when you're starting to work with more large-scale projects uh, that have more people working on them or just a lot more time being invested in them, then you're going to want to think about branching more effectively. And to do that, it's really actually quite easy in Git. So I'm going to create another branch, and this is going to be the main develop branch. Now generally in a big project, you're going to have the master branch, which is like the production site. So if you deploy the application, Generally speaking, uh, if you're sort of conforming to this uh, workflow called the git flow workflow, then you can use the master branch to say this is the state uh, that the production site is in. So that is the code that is in production, or in other words, being used on your live site. Now the develop branch is something that uh, is always going to be up to date with master, or pretty much up to date. and that's going to be where your uh, main work is going to be happening that has not yet been merged into the master branch or in other words production. The develop branch then is where you can have the absolute latest version of your code and uh, generally speaking when you develop a feature or maybe you're fixing a bug that's going to be on a separate branch which you merge into dev. Now let's go ahead and create that develop branch. So to create a new branch from master, I'm first going to check that I'm up to date. So to pull the master branch, I'm going to do git pull origin master. And as you can see, we're all already up to date for this uh, branch. And I'm going to create another one. Let's go ahead and do git checkout uh, dash b for a new branch. And then I'm just going to call this dev. Some people call it develop, some people might call it perhaps the name their repository, it's just a branch that is going to contain the main uh, working state of your repository uh, up to sort of the latest point with all the latest sort of at least mostly working features. Generally speaking, uh, features should be not merged into the develop branch unless it's ready uh, and essentially functioning. It should have tests that pass preferably. So I'm going to create that. And now if I do git branch again, uh, you can see I've got dev and master. In this case, because I checked out dev from when I was on the master branch, that means that dev is essentially just another copy of master, or at least that's how I think of branches as essentially another state of your repository, uh, such that you can change one and the other one will not be affected. Now let's go ahead and show you an example by uh, making a commit to dev and I'm just going to push that to github. Uh, so I'm just going to do git status just to see the current state of my repository and at the moment you can see I have created this virtual environment which we're just going to ignore for now but I've also added some requirements and these are all new files as you can see in the green that I haven't added yet. So I'm going to do git add uh, tutorial requirements uh, star, git status, and now you can see I've added all the new files that were in that current, that folder that I just specified, so tutorial requirements, and then all the new files, uh, dev, base, and production, uh, that I want to add into this commit. 
Now that it's in green, you have to make sure that it's in green before you commit. And I'm just going to do commit because we know that we're on the dev branch because it said that we switched when we checked it out. So as soon as I did git checkout dash b dev, it said you switched to a new branch dev. If you're not sure or you think you might have changed branch, you can always do git branch and that'll give you that up to date information. But I'm going to do git commit dash m and then I'm going to say added requirements files. So now that I've created that, that commit is only on the develop or the dev branch. And I can push that to GitHub by doing git push origin dev. Now I know that went to GitHub because of the remote origin and uh, the branch dev that I specified. So if you're not sure about the uh, remote as well, you can do git remote. If you want to see what that is related to, you can do git remote dash v for verbose, and then it'll say, okay, so the origin is linked to this. Um, so that is my git repo. If I go to that git repo, uh, you can see if I refresh this, that you can see now that it says, uh, you recent, recently pushed changes and they are on dev. And you can see that was only one minute ago. So if I were to change to the dev branch, you can see over here it says only a minute ago uh, in the tutorial folder. But if we go back to the master branch uh, in the tutorial folder, you can see that was updated three days ago. So we know that it has not been committed to master. Uh, you could also do git log uh, on the master branch uh, via the command line if you wanted to see uh, the log uh, of the recent commits. But that is essentially it. That is pretty much how you would be able to uh, develop features uh, on the separate branches, merge them into dev, and then when you're ready to deploy your application, merge it into master and then take any steps as, as required to be able to deploy the application. If you're using something like GitHub Pages, then your master branch may already just be deployed as soon as you push to it. Uh, but that is Git Flow. In the next one, we're going to talk about the sort of one part that I haven't covered about GitFlow, which is uh, how to do a pull request and perhaps some of the reviewing that also goes along with that.